everybody, I'm Nick, and in this video I'm going to introduce you to the biggest feature coming in C-Shop 13 that will fundamentally change the way we write C-Shop just because of how many places we can use this in, and that feature is called Extensions. Now, you might have seen this as Extensions and Roles, or Roles. We're going to focus on the extension aspect that was announced in Build because we still don't know what eventually will make it in C-Shop 13. Again, that is a few months away, but what I'm going to show you today will make it into the language, and it will basically completely replace extension methods as we know them, just because of how much more versatile and powerful it is. Let's take a look at some code and see how the feature is going to work. If you like that of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training. Check out my courses on domtrain.com. Okay, so I'm on Visual Studio Code because this feature hasn't been merged in Visual Studio yet or Rider or any ID, but the code I'm going to show you will be valid C Sharp 13 code. Now, I will keep the example extremely simple just so we can understand the feature itself. So let's say that we have a class called person like this one. The very important thing is that we don't own this person class. Let's assume that this lives in some other assembly, some other library, some NuGet package, some code we don't own. And by the way, it could live in code we do own, but in this case, we're just gonna pretend like we don't own this. I will still keep everything in a single file just so you can have a better view of what's going on. And let's say I wanna say var person equals new person over here. And let's say I wanna get the age of this person. I have the date of birth, but I don't have the age. So what if I wanna say var age equals person dot what? Well, you can say person dot date of birth, and then I can say date time dot today dot year minus the person dot date of birth dot year. And this is not normally how you would do this. You would also account for leap years. It's a bit more complicated, but let's just simplify this for the sake of this video. So this will give us the age because we get an offset from today all the way to the date of birth makes sense, but if I want to get the age in multiple locations, I don't want to have to calculate it every single time like this, because what if I accidentally mess up this symbol or mess up this symbol? Like, you can accidentally introduce mistakes if you don't create a method for something like this. And I could make a method within this scope only, but what if I want everyone that can use the person class in this assembly to also use a method to calculate the age. Well, I can very easily do that by introducing an extension method. So what you would usually have is something like this. You would create in your own assembly now a public static class called person extensions, and you go with a public static int get age, and you'd have to create a method, an extension method, and you would say this person to explain that you're extending the person and this is a static method in a static class, very important, you're very limited in many ways, and it has to be a method, it can't be anything else. And then you would be able to take this, move it here, and say, return this. Again, if you want to be very accurate, you would introduce leap year accuracy in here, but it doesn't really matter for this video. And then I would go here, and I would say, person.getAge, and I would get the age from the method. That's really cool, and it adds a lot of flexibility in our code. The same amount of flexibility that introducing something like GraphQL into your system to replace some REST APIs can introduce to your architecture. And that's why we just launched a seven and a half hour getting started course with GraphQL in .NET by Michael Steib, who is the creator of Hot Chocolate, the library that basically everyone is using to build GraphQL APIs in .NET, including Microsoft, by the way. They have chosen to use that library instead of making their own just because of how good it is. And also Michael is part of the steering committee of GraphQL, not just for .NET, but for everyone around the world. So not only does he make the library for .NET, but he decides with other people as well where GraphQL is going. So the first 100 of you can use the link in the description or use code GraphQL20 at checkout to get 20% off. There is just no better learning material in .NET to learn how to build GraphQL APIs. But the biggest question for something like this is what happens if you want to have a property, for example, here? I don't want to have to say get age to write this Java-like code in my C shop. What can I do? Well, the truth is you can't really do anything because you don't own this person class and you cannot have an extension on a property until C Sharp 13, because everything is now changing with that extension feature. Let me show you how we would write this using that new feature that's coming in C Sharp 13. So instead of having this person extension static class, let's just forget about it. And let's just say public implicit extension. And then I'm going to say person 
extension for which type? Well, I want to extend the person class, which I don't own, but now I have the ability to extend it. And this is not static. The members on this class don't have to be static and they also don't have to be methods. So they can be, I could just go ahead and say public int get age and have that exact experience. And the way this would look is I would say, take the whole thing, but you can now, because this is not static, access this dot. So you can access the instance of that person like this, and you can get the age in that exact same way. Nothing else changes. It is still an extension on that person in the form of an extension method. But now this, in my opinion, is way better. It can be organized in this implicit extension. And by saying it is an implicit extension, it means that it is automatically added to that type. You don't have to do anything about it. And the biggest benefit, in my opinion, is that you no longer have to have it as a method. Now you can just say int age, you can turn this into a property over here, and then I can simply say something like this. So my code now is way better, looks way better, and I can just go ahead and say person.age in my main code, and this in C Sharp 13 will work. It is brilliant, it's intuitive, it's so, so nice. And of course, this could be static if you wanted to. Nothing prevents you from having it as a static property or a static method, but they can also be instances. Very, very nice. But here's where it gets even more interesting, because when you have implicit something, then it's very common to have an explicit something. And you actually can. What if, for example, I want to have a representation for that person if the person is more than 18 years old, which in Europe is an adult that can drink, and I want to get the favorite drink of that person. Well, I don't know if that person is necessarily an adult at this point, so I can just go ahead and say uh, public string favorite drink and say uh, get as a method, you know, return uh, old fashioned, because I don't necessarily know if that person is an adult. So this can be part of every person. It has to be an adult. And that's where explicit comes in. So I can say public explicit extension, and now I'm going to give it the name of the thing I want to represent. So I want to say adult in this case. So adult for person. And this looks more like a type than an extension, but now I can take that, the get favorite drink, and I can add it here. And at this point, I still can't use this get favorite drink method here. This would just not compile in C sharp 13. But what I can do is I can say that var adult equals person, but I can now explicitly define the type, which is going to be adult. And this will be a conversion that's going to be allowed, an explicit conversion from one type to another. So a conversion from a person type to an adult. And now because adult has a favorite drink method that's part of this instance, then I can get a favorite drink. Of course, this could also be a property. So I could, again, say something like this, turn this into a property. And I don't have to own that original class, that original type anymore. All I need to do is just create the extension classes. I want this implicit extension to add implicitly some extra members to that class or to that type, and then some explicit ones to effectively create a subcategory or a projection of that type. Or it is basically an extension because it just adds some extra ones and I can just implicitly convert here and call that method. Of course, this would have to be adult here, but you get the point. Now this will be an option in C Sharp 13. Now, how should you feel about this feature? Well, it kind of feels like this feature will replace extension methods because I think people, as they're extending types, they will want to have the option to have instance and static members and also properties and methods in a single file. And this type of organization works very nicely. You can also have other static members here and use them in that extension type as well. So I can totally see this changing how we write C sharp and completely replacing extension methods. But I also think that the property aspect of this will give a lot of flexibility on how we've been building code and allow us to add behavior in types that we couldn't before in ways that we couldn't before. 
It is extremely nice. I really, really love this feature. Obviously, we're not getting discriminated unions anytime soon, but this is a nice big feature to add a lot of flavor in how we write C-sharp. Now, this is just a quick introduction. When the feature is eventually Visual Studio, I will make a more in-depth video going through all the edge cases and what you can and cannot do. But I want to know your thoughts. What do you think about this feature? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Are you going to use it? Are you excited? And what's the most requested feature that you would have from Microsoft? I know it's going to be discriminated unions, but if there's another one or maybe from another language, leave it in the comments down below. Well, that's all I have for you for today. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.